When it comes to generalizations of the horseshoe map shifts and the symbolic dynamics that go with them, that's definitely the way to go to understand what's happening. But there's an entire world out there for us to consider. Let's start off with a motivating example. Consider the following invertible, chaotic, dynamical system, discrete time on the plane, just like the horseshoe, but a little bit different. What we're going to do is take our square, and just like before, we're going to squeeze it horizontally, stretch it vertically, and bend it around. But we're going to do so in kind of a weird and incomplete way. There are going to be three horizontal strips that when we look at what happens when we do that squeezing, stretching, bending, they're laid down atop the originals in a manner that is slightly different than a full shift. Now, how are we going to deal with this? This is not the same as the full shift. What this is, is a subshift, a subshift of finite type. The idea is the following. This map is going to have an invariant set, and the dynamics on that invariant set are topologically conjugate to a shift on sigma, capital sigma, a certain subspace of bi-infinite sequences on three symbols. We've got those three horizontal strips. This is not a full shift on three symbols. It is a subshift. What I mean specifically is that there is the now familiar diagram where I have the dynamics on the invariant set lambda, and I have a space of symbol sequences, sigma, with the shift map on them, and a topological conjugacy, a way of assigning itineraries to points in the invariant set. Now, the key is the definition of this space sigma, this subspace of bi-infinite sequences on three symbols. And this is going to involve a new idea. It's not really a new idea. This is classical stuff. This comes straight out of computer science and language theory. These are DFAs, or deterministic finite automata. So let's start off by remembering what that map does, how it squeezes and stretches and bends around, and does so with respect to those three strips. Let's go back and think about how to label everything. I'm going to label those three horizontal strips 0, 1, and 2, moving from bottom to top. When I look at their images, then I get three vertical strips, 0, 1, and 2, that are laid down atop the originals in a particular configuration. Now, one way for us to encode what is happening is to draw a graph, a directed graph, with nodes that correspond to these strips, these symbols, 0, 1, and 2. Now, here's the key step. If you start off in the horizontal strip H0, where do you go next? Well, you get stretched out over strips 1 and 2. You can't go from strip 0 to strip 0. You can only go from 0 to 1 or 2 under the action of this map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw directed edges in this graph from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 2. And now I'm going to do the same thing with strip 1. That horizontal strip 1 gets stretched over all three strips. So 1 can go to 1, or it can go to 0, or it can go to 2. So this directed graph can have self loops edges that go from the vertex to itself. If I look at what happens to strip 2, that gets stretched out over strips 0 and 1. So I'm going to draw arrows from the vertex 2 to the vertices 0 and 1. Now together, this directed graph is giving me a deterministic finite automata. That is, I've set some alphabet, these three symbols, 0, 1, 2, this Directed graph, this transition graph, is telling me about legal strings, symbol sequences that are permissible, that build up this space, capital sigma. Capital sigma is a language determined by this DFA. It's the set of all legal, bi-infinite strings 
that can be realized as directed paths on this transition graph. So, for example, in this graph, I can look at the string that is just all ones. This corresponds to an equilibrium. It's invariant under the shift map, and it's the only equilibrium in this map, in this invariant set. Aha! Consider the following itinerary. I have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, repeated by infinitely. This is, of course, a periodic orbit of period 3. Is this legal? Oh, yes, it is. That traces out a path in this directed transition graph. Now, in general, if I just pick an initial condition in the invariant set, look at its itinerary, it's going to be some random string of zeros, ones, and twos. Let me just write down a random string of zeros, ones, and twos. Oh, wait, we have a problem. This is not a legal string. This does not correspond to a point in our invariant set. Why? Take a look at these places where I have a zero, zero, or a two, two. Those repeated zeros or repeated twos are not allowed. Those are not permissible paths in this directed transition graph. So this graph is telling us what the legal strings are, what the possible symbol sequences are. This is the space of bi-infinite sequences on which the shift map acts to give a topological conjugacy to the action of the original map. What do you think about this? What I think about this is this is so cool, and it really works. It's amazing that you can encode everything that is possible in this simple deterministic finite automaton. You can imagine creating all kinds of languages with many symbols, with many restrictions. These are subshifts of finite type. So for example, I could just say, let's look at a system with five symbols, zero, one, two, three, four. And I have certain transitions that are possible, but lots of transitions that are not possible. Are there maps that give this language as the invariant set on which symbolic dynamics can be built? That's really cool to think about. You might try to draw an example of a map that does this. It's maybe not so easy. This application of DFAs to subshifts of finite type is such an expressive language for building symbolic dynamics, for being able to control and understand chaotic dynamical systems.